Whatever the weather, Weymouth looks a pretty place. No doubt about it, Weymouth is pretty as a lobster on a plate. By which I mean unlike other soft southern resorts, Weymouth has got a bite to it. Now, why did I say that? Weymouth's got a bite to it. It looks superficially traditional sandcastles, sand in your knickers, the games you remember from your first ever seaside. For instance, for donkey's years on Weymouth Sands, on Weymouth Bay, Mr. Darrington has been sculpting in the sand in the seas. He does it near the bus shelter, opposite the bank, so a lot of people can see it. There's so many good ones, I love Yeah. I mean, you can see all the different ones he's done at that, with the head, along with the two. Because there's lots of colour in that as well. Yeah, it's fantastic, yeah. And I, and I still like the seahorses, because I think he does horses beautifully. And he does monkeys beautifully. What do the monkeys mean? <laughs> this is a waiting room. There's a preggy one, and there's one with a potty on his head. The one with a broken arm. This, this one is actually called the waiting room. There used to be three or four sand sculptors working on Weymouth Beach, but Mr. Darrington's the last of the line. Is he drunk? Yeah. Uh, he has been on the binge, yes. yes. What's the matter with the monkey next door? This one? Well, she's telling them off, isn't she? And if he wants, Mr. Darrington can do seahorses and a lovely wedding of Princess Di and of Falklands. It's possible to model in other sands, but not get the same detail. People can, can move, make sand models, you know, a few inches above the sand, a reclining figure for them, but they can't make them stand up, which I can do here. And I'm left alone, that would last a month, easily. Just sand, Weymouth sand, of course. That's that little girl, this is yours. The sweetness of Weymouth, the joy of the place, is the lays here on these safe sands. But thinking people know, and it's easy to see all around this Weymouth Bay, creatures, not all of them pretty, that bite. Up in the hills behind, the British Army train drive through town for this and that from time to time. And out in the channel, standing off on the horizon, you might see a warship any time. Across the road and through the shops, there's a quay, a little harbour side, pretty as the one you get in the Earl's Court boat show. A rowing boat will take you in fair weather across the harbour mouth to the Melcombe side, where the brewery sits. This is an independent brewery so far. But did you know most of the beer they now bring in, in tins and trucks, from their other plant, a good hundred miles away in industrial Redruth? The old Weymouth Brewery, 1904. It's a lovely building, worth preserving to look at. Since the days of the Great Western, Weymouth's been the port for packet boats to the Channel Islands and continues, so far, a real working port, with daily sailings and to Normandy. And the port is in the town, between the brewery and the beach. It's always been so. No wonder they worry about rabies. 1349, bubonic plague, first came to Britain in a rat in a sack at Weymouth Docks. Ouch. Okay. Fish they bring in. Weymouth Harbour's attraction, its bite, is it's not just a pretty sight at the back of a beach, it's a working port. 
where the holiday makers can, if they wish, go to the quayside and watch the fish, swung ashore by men whose livelihood is catching fish, to be beheaded and gutted and similarly prepared for fancy restaurant tables. in the season at the sailing times a Dorset police escort for a real boat train. The only time you see this happen in Britain now, a train comes through the streets to pick up passengers, ferried in from over the sea. It must cost a fortune. Why don't they use taxis? It's only half a mile to the real station, but it looks a sight. It's a real train. Oh yes, they don't have this at the Earl's Court boat show. Despite the distractions, the customs are vigilant. I doubt anyone would bring a French poodle in on a ferry, but on the private yachts, it's always worth checking. The customs men are too busy to chat much, unlike the holiday makers, time on their hands, but plenty to see of an interesting nature. On a trip round the bay in a motorboat, viewing all places. Right round the naval dockyard on a one hour cruise. A one hour trip, one pound eighty, adults to all places of interest, in the naval installations, dockyard, helicopters, prisons, mulberries. With a qualified man in charge, you'll be home in time for tea. Just time for a last paddle. And just look at that, the pier. Supposed to look like a Mississippi steamboat setting off across the English Channel. I'd say influenced by Le Corbusier. It won an architectural prize. It was the last pleasure pier Britain built, designed by V.J. Wenning in 1937. But nobody wants beers now. You can take tea there and get chips. Down at the harbour, the Jersey Ferry prepares to leave. It's a Belgian boat. Must be Portland over there. Are the pubs open yet? No, a little early. Two man cubs grabbing a mouthful of chips. Now, one of the reasons I say Weymouth Bay's got bite is the pubs. 
when they open a little gem, the black dog and the Albion, the Royal Adelaide and the Jersey, Duke of Edinburgh, the warship with four funnels all steaming. The pubs, of course, do open at the appointed time. And inside certain pubs on certain nights, among the natives, a Dorset game is played. Weymouth style. War cry for every megastar of a player. Six, Chicken joined an ox. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Men only tonight. Women have a separate lead. Yeah, bad seven. Swine over. One. One. Bad nine. We want a proxy. Away from Hagar the Horrible, the visitors can still stroll and shop till quite late. In Weymouth, it's extraordinary, just like the continent in the season for trinkets. Down by the harbour, among a key line of loud, lively, boisterous boozers, is one of the two noted restaurants in town. Favourite with the visiting yachtsman. Anyway, that is the escargot capital of the world. Okay. Well, it looks lovely, aren't it? <laughs> Do you have um, seafood? There's a very similar soup that's made, uh, particularly in Charleston, South Carolina. Yeah. It's very similar to the crab soup that's served here in Wayne. It's called sheep crab soup. Yeah. Sheep crab. Sheep crab soup. Sheet crab soup. And is it's it a cream of... sauce? Cream, cream soup? It's cream and cherry. Right. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. very, very similar to this. Delicious. Naturally, one overhears a preoccupation with seafood, but also with yachting matters. You hear what time he wants us to leave in the morning? No. 5.30. What time do we have to be at Portland? No, I don't. It's Ken who wants us to leave that early. Where are you going? Uh, we're going to Torquay, if the weather's but OK. But it's critical getting around Portlandville anyway. You, know, you, have, you yeah. have to go at the right well, time. Well, you have to yeah. go at the right time or else the race is awful. <laughs> well, he went through the middle ones, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> the restaurant's not open all hours. It's advisable to book a table. The kids are still up. Weymouth is a jolly holiday town. But the bingo won't stay open all night. This isn't Las Vegas or Brighton. By half past ten, on the Borough Council's exquisitely illuminated timepiece, most families and couples will have now retired to their boarding houses. The sea air makes you tired, that's what they say. But there are places that can be lively. Don't forget, youth from army camps and the Navy come to Weymouth to play all year round. The Malibu, with live bands, but no gin. The Cat's Whiskers, a much more strict establishment said to be frequented by the influential in the town and those in the know. The Harbour Club, it has a discotheque. Around town, the naval provost in their white vans keep an eye on their lads. Those who got out, that is, across the causeway into town. See ya, see ya.